Imagine the very heart of the Earth-shifting course. Seismologists now report that the planet's inner core, a solid ball of iron roughly 2,400 kilometers across, about 1,500 miles, has in effect stopped its long-term spin ahead of the crust and even begun to turn in the opposite direction. What does that mean for us on the surface? Could this deep earth flip help explain a recent uptick in volcanic eruptions and powerful quakes? Those are the burning questions scientists are asking as the year 2025 brings one large tremor after another and dozens of volcanoes rumble to life. We know something dramatic has happened deep inside, but is that really driving what we see above ground? Here's what we know for sure, what remains speculative and why the answers are still murky. Many scientists have long believed the Earth's inner core rotates a bit faster, super-rotates compared with the overlying rock. By analysing seismic waves from repeated quakes, recent studies have finally captured a clear reversal of that behaviour. Tracking waves from earthquakes recorded across the globe, researchers found a striking pattern. Through the early 2000s, the core continued its eastward super-rotation, but by the late 2000s, it had begun to sub-rotate moving westward at two to three times slower rates, effectively reversing course. In other words, the core unwound itself along the same path back toward where it was two decades earlier. Independent analyses of global seismometer data confirm a similar picture. The excess spin that had built up in the 1990s appears to have ceased around 2009, and since then the core's relative motion has been slowing or even reversing. As one seismologist puts it, repeated quake wiggles recorded over years suggest that forces in the outer core have been tugging on the inner core and making it move a little bit. Multiple lines of evidence indicate that the core's long-term rotation turned around sometime in the past decade. This is not the first time Earth's deep spin has shifted. Seismologists note a roughly 60 to 70 year oscillation in inner core rotation. Data suggests the core might flip direction about every 30 or 35 years as part of a grand cycle. If that cycle holds, the current slowdown and reversal simply fit a pattern. In fact, analysis of quakes going back to the mid 20th century implies the core may have stopped and then spun backward more than once before. The key advance of the latest work is the precision of the record. Scientists can literally see the core unwinding by matching nearly identical quake waveforms decades apart. Even still, some disagreement persists. A recent re-examination of the data finds that the apparent cycle might be only 20 to 30 years long instead of 70, raising questions about how to model this motion. Bottom line, Researchers agree the inner core's rotation rate has changed, but the exact timing and cause of these flips, perhaps linked to complex magnetic or gravitational coupling with the outer core and mantle, remain under debate. As one geophysicist observes after decades of work, we are coming to an ever clearer picture of the changing inner core, but how and why it behaves this way is still being sorted out. What might a core reversal actually do to the planet? For one thing, a change in inner core motion subtly alters the geodynamo processes in the liquid outer core, which in turn governs Earth's magnetic field. The inner core is embedded in a churning ocean of molten iron. As the outer core's flow interacts magnetically with the solid core, it tries to drag the inner core along. When the outer core flows past the inner core, it carries it via magnetic coupling. In principle, a slowdown or reversal could modulate those flows and tweak the geomagnetic field's strength or pattern, although the magnetic field is mostly driven by outer core convection and is not caused by the inner core's spin. Some researchers have even linked longer-term core dynamics to tiny fluctuations in Earth's rotation rate, suggesting a feedback where gravitational coupling at the core mantle boundary might cause six-year oscillations in spin and hence ripple through geophysical systems. But beyond magnetic and angular momentum effects, the jury is far from in on any connection to earthquakes or volcanoes. In fact, most geophysicists caution that we should not leap to conclusions about core changes shaking the ground. These alterations deep in the earth do not have much of an impact on our lives at the surface. The broader significance of the new studies 
is not yet clear. The inner core lies some 3,000 kilometers beneath us, under roughly 1,800 miles of mantle rock, and it is largely decoupled from the rigid crust by the liquid outer core and ductile lower mantle. Any mechanical change must propagate through these layers, which respond on geological timescales, not instantaneously. In other words, while the core's spin reversal is a fascinating geodynamic event, experts emphasize it is unlikely to immediately trigger volcanoes or quakes. This year, however, Earth's surface has been uncommonly restless. A procession of major earthquakes and eruptions has made headlines around the globe. Notably, on July 29, a magnitude 8.8 .8 megathrust quake struck off the Kamchatka Peninsula in Russia. Although strong tsunami warnings briefly followed, only one fatality was reported, far fewer than in many large quakes, and aftershocks have continued. Earlier in 2025, a magnitude 7.7 .7 quake on March 28 devastated Myanmar's Sagaing region, killing over 5,000 people. Other powerful tremors included a magnitude 7.6 in the Caribbean near Honduras in February and a remote 7.5 under Antarctica's Drake Passage in August. In total, at least nine earthquakes of magnitude 7 or higher have occurred so far in 2025, certainly a busy year, but not dramatically different from some recent years in terms of global counts. Still, such events remind us that stress on the Earth's crust is ever-present along tectonic plate boundaries and fault zones. Volcanism has likewise been active. As of mid-2025, there have been more than 50 confirmed eruptions at over 50 volcanoes worldwide. These include both long-running eruptions and new flares. For example, Klyuchevskaya Sopka on Kamchatka, one of the most active volcanoes on Earth, has been erupting again through July, sending ash and steam high into the sky. In Indonesia, Mount Luotobi Laki Laki produced spectacular explosive eruptions this summer, lofting multi-kilometer, mile-high ash plumes. Even relatively small islands like New Zealand's Wakari or White Island have been venting steam and ash in an ongoing way this year. Meanwhile, massive shield volcanism has continued. Lava lakes and flows persist at Kilauea in Hawaii and at Nyamulagira in the East African Rift. And in the Pacific Northwest, scientists have been watching Axial Seamount, a submarine volcano off Oregon, which is inflating and has produced swarms of small quakes in anticipation of an eruption expected by the end of the year. Though that eruption, when it comes, will be largely isolated underwater. Taken together, 2025's seismic and volcanic incidents might feel like a surge. But do the numbers really show an unprecedented jump? On volcanism, most experts say no. Eruptions wax and wane over time, and our heightened ability to detect them means we report more small events nowadays. The frequency of large events has remained impressively constant over centuries. In short, statistically, we have no clear trend of more eruptions or quakes right now, just the same geologic pulse of peaks and valleys we see in any given year. That said, it is natural to wonder if the core's new behavior could somehow feed into this activity. Scientists have certainly investigated other links between Earth's spin dynamics and surface events. For instance, a recent study of Italy's Mount Etna found that subtle shifts in Earth's rotational axis and spin rate correlated with slightly higher rates of eruptions and earthquakes there. As the lead author notes, while climate drives Earth's spin, its rotation can also drive volcanoes and seismicity, meaning that even small tidal stresses from shifts in axis alignment could be enough to nudge an already primed system. But polar motion and inner core rotation are quite different. The Etna study concerned the entire Earth's rotation axis, wandering by centimetres, linked to changing climate and fluid distributions on Earth, a subtle crustal deformation on yearly timescales. The inner core reversal, by contrast, is buried two to three thousand kilometers down. No scientist has so far shown a clear mechanism by which a few degrees change in deep core speed would translate into a crustal stress or melt rate change that could set off an earthquake or volcano. If anything, experts stress the opposite. Changes in core motion likely have only indirect effects. For example, while an altered magnetic field driven by outer core flow could slightly change how the magnetosphere funnels cosmic rays. 
Those effects operate through long-term climate or ionospheric processes, not through jumping tectonic plates. The inner core may indeed wobble and wander to retain the shape of the geoid, but this is a slow, viscous process not akin to a gear suddenly firing a fault line. In practical terms, scientists warn there is no evidence that the inner core's flip has produced any earthquake or eruption spike. To the contrary, studies routinely find that decades of deep earth changes have not much of an impact on our lives at the surface. Seismic waves can tell us about the core, but so far those waves show only the core's own story, not a direct imprint of core shifts on quake zones. Even volcanologists who study seafloor volcanoes note that eruptions at places like Axial Seamount are driven by magma buildup, tectonic plate spreading, and even external forces like the tide, rather than anything deep at Earth's centre. In Alaska and Iceland, volcanoes erupt because hot mantle plumes or subduction zones do their work, adding a faster or slower spin to the inner core. Millions of years underground is not known to accelerate those processes. That said, researchers do not entirely dismiss subtle couplings. It is conceivable that over long intervals, changes in core mantle coupling or thermal flux could influence mantle convection patterns, which in turn might affect plate motions or hotspot vigour. Theoretical models suggest that the core mantle boundary is not smooth, but features variations that could weakly link core dynamics to the lowermost mantle. If the inner core's motion changed enough to alter heat flow at that boundary, then perhaps extra buoyant blobs of magma could rise more easily in some regions, a very long-term effect. But this is highly speculative. No observational study has detected any synchronized pattern between core rotation changes and, say, global mid-ocean ridge spreading or subduction zone quaking. For now, the data say our recent quakes and eruptions can be explained by familiar plate tectonic and volcanic processes without invoking a core reversal. Consider the biggest events of 2025. The magnitude 8.8 .8 Kamchatka quake was a subduction megathrust typical of the Ring of Fire, and tsunami warnings were triggered because of the trench geometry, not the core. Myanmar's deadly 7.7 .7 quake struck at a major crustal suture, again with no precedence in deep earth news. If tomorrow we saw an eight and a half rupture in South America, we would naturally look at the Nazca plate and Chile trench, not a core torque. Similarly, Kilauea's lava flows respond to pressure in Hawaii's plume, and Etna's blasts respond to magma chamber levels and local faulting. There is no known physical pathway for a sudden spin reversal at 5,000 degrees Celsius in the core to generate an earthquake in the crust, especially on the short timescales, days to years, that matter for hazards. In a nutshell, the recent reversal of Earth's inner core rotation is an extraordinary geophysical discovery, a glimpse at the hidden dynamics of our planet's engine. It underscores how interconnected the deep Earth is. Gravity, magnetism and rotation link solid and liquid layers in a grand feedback system. But whether this deep spin flip has any practical consequence for volcanoes or quakes remains unknown. So far, scientists stress that we cannot link the two, and most expect any influence would be subtle and slow. The cause change is a fascinating reminder of Earth's complexity, but for the moment it is a separate story from the flurry of lava and aftershocks. Could future data change that view? Perhaps? Geophysicists will keep monitoring seismic waves for any further surprises in the core, and volcanologists will continue tracking eruptions in real time. If patterns emerge, for example, a decade of unusually mild or frantic surface activity matching a core oscillation, scientists will certainly investigate. But for now, it is prudent to treat the core's flip as a deep mystery that has revealed new information about Earth's interior, without assuming it is the culprit behind today's headlines. Earth scientists remind us that we still have far to go in solving the riddles of the inner Earth. The core's role in our planet's lively surface is still a riddle, and it may be years or decades before we understand if the heartbeat of the Earth can indeed sway the fiery and quaking world above. If you found this deep dive into Earth's hidden forces as fascinating as we did, don't forget to smash that like button, share this video with friends who love science, and hit subscribe so you never miss an update. 
and be sure to tap that hype icon to help this story reach an even wider audience. Thank you for watching.